A warm greeting? Today is Thursday, September 5, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I will be discussing several disturbances we are monitoring in the Atlantic region. Although all of them have a low probability of cyclonic development in the coming days, we will remain alert to see if any of them manage to become a tropical cyclone. This is typical for the month of September and the peak of the season, when it is important to monitor any disturbance that presents an opportunity for cyclonic development. We will especially keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico region over the next seven days. For now, everything is calm in the Caribbean, with no threats expected for the next seven days, as well as along the U.S. East Coast and Central America. I'd like to briefly mention that next week, there is a high probability that a tropical cyclone will develop over the eastern Pacific waters, which could be of interest to the western and northwestern regions of Mexico. Later today, I will record a video to discuss the forecast for this potential future cyclone. However, in this video, I want to focus on the Atlantic region. In the latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center at 2 p.m., you can see that five areas have been highlighted with probabilities of cyclonic development over the next few days. As you can see, all the areas are marked in yellow, which represents a low probability of development. First, we will be monitoring the Gulf of Mexico region, as there is a low-pressure system located east of Texas with a 10% chance of development as it moves south over the next few days. This system will also interact with a tropical wave arriving in the Yucatan Peninsula this weekend, where there is also a low probability of development over the next seven days. Although the probabilities remain low for now, the National Hurricane Center has designated this low-pressure area as Invest 90. We will stay alert to see if a tropical depression develops in the medium or long term. At the moment, there's nothing to worry about for the U.S. or eastern and southern Mexico. We will remain attentive, and if there are any changes in the forecasts, we will notify you through my channel, Hurricane Info. Additionally, we have a strong tropical wave moving north of Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. This system also has only a 10% chance of cyclonic development, with strong wind shear in this area of the Atlantic likely preventing significant development. However, we will remain vigilant in case there are any changes in the projections. The National Hurricane Center has also marked a non-tropical low-pressure system, designated as Invest 99, with a 30% chance of cyclonic development as it moves northeast. At the moment, it poses no threat to land. But there is a possibility that this low could acquire some tropical characteristics over the next few days, and we might see the brief development of a subtropical or tropical storm. Nevertheless, this system does not present a major threat. On the other hand, the National Hurricane Center continues to monitor a low-pressure system located in the intertropical convergence zone. This system has a low 20% probability of development, so any development here is expected to be slow over the next few days. In the long term, however, there is a possibility of a tropical depression developing. Fortunately, any cyclone that forms in this area is likely to track over open Atlantic waters without posing a threat to the Caribbean. We can see that the Atlantic has become a bit more active over the last few days. However, all these disturbances still have a low probability of cyclonic development. This is mainly due to the fact that we are currently in an unfavorable phase for tropical cyclone formation, and the Atlantic continues to face challenges with dry and stable air. However, as I mentioned a few days ago, a more favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation is expected to arrive around September 10th, and conditions could become more favorable for cyclonic development. As we will see in the next few minutes, this is particularly relevant for the tropical Atlantic region between the Caribbean and Africa, where it is typical for tropical cyclones to form during the second and third weeks of September. In fact, if we compare the wind shear anomalies, you can see in red that there is above normal wind shear northeast of the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico. So currently, the conditions are not very favorable for cyclonic development, and that's why it's not surprising that all of these areas have low probabilities of development. However, as a more favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation sets in, notice how the models project that wind shear will decrease significantly starting in the third week of September. The blue areas represent below normal wind shear, which could open up the opportunity for cyclonic development, as predicted by some experts, including the University of Colorado. Many meteorologists agree that starting from the third week of September, we could enter a fairly active period in terms of cyclonic activity, primarily because atmospheric conditions will become more favorable for development. It is possible that the dry, stable air will decrease somewhat over the coming weeks, and ocean surface temperatures continue to warm in the main cyclonic development zone. In fact, they are still near record levels and well above what is normal for this time of year. The models are already beginning to project increased cyclonic activity in the long term, primarily related to a strong tropical wave that is still over Africa, but will leave the continent around September 10th. It is possible that this tropical wave will quickly become a tropical cyclone once it reaches Atlantic waters. 
For example, in the latest projection from the American model, GFS, this tropical wave that departs on September 10th is expected to develop, and it also shows the development of another low-pressure area associated with the zone marked by the National Hurricane Center. Confidence in these projections increases when we look at the European model, which also quickly develops a tropical cyclone associated with that tropical wave departing on September 10th. Furthermore, other models, such as the German model, see the development of one, two, or even three tropical cyclones within seven to ten days. The UK model, which is usually conservative, also shows the possibility of cyclonic development between the Caribbean and Africa, as well as in the Gulf of Mexico. Similarly, the Canadian model develops two tropical cyclones next week between the Caribbean and Africa. However, these are long-term projections, and we will remain attentive to see if the Atlantic finally becomes more active or continues in this period of cyclonic inactivity. What we do know is that conditions should become more favorable for cyclonic development by the third and fourth weeks of September. The good news is that at the moment there is no imminent threat. We will be paying close attention to the Gulf of Mexico, as any development of a tropical depression in this area could pose a risk to the U.S. and Mexico. Stay calm, and as is typical during the peak of the season, we will continue to monitor any changes in the model's projections. Later today, I'll try to post another video to discuss the factors identified by the University of Colorado, which have kept the Atlantic quiet since early August. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click the red subscribe button, and then click the bell to get notifications whenever I post new videos. That's all for now. Until the next video, where I'll be discussing the potential development in the Eastern Pacific. See you later.